March 21, 2004. Revisiting Custody of the Senses. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. This simple rhymed verse is offered to children to cope with other children's name-calling rather than entering into a battle of words. It's probably a good way to try to stop the cycle, but it requires positive affirmation. We know that we actually start to believe what we hear about ourselves. What we hear and what we say, in fact, does affect us. The present effort to remove obscenity and profanity from radio and TV is not just a way to pretty up the airways, but to safeguard our society. The Bible gives many examples of how the spoken word is powerful. In the story of creation, God's word was all that was necessary. For example, let there be light, and it was. Jesus' word was all that was necessary for healing. For example, say but the word, and I shall be healed. Our words also can be creative and healing, or they can be destructive and hurting. This is true of individuals and of society as a whole. When we allow the false sense of freedom of speech to reduce humanity to no more than another species of animal, animal-like behavior is not far behind. An old concept of custody of the senses, of self-discipline over what we see and hear, may need to be revisited. Jesus said that it is not what goes into a body that makes a person unclean, but what comes out. But what we say and do is greatly affected by what we take in. In particular, our language will reflect what we hear. Our actions will follow our language. The Great Lenten Fast gives us the refocus on our own actions and our words. How appropriate to listen to the words of Jesus, not just his words of teaching, but his utterances during his suffering. Jesus' words of forgiveness, compassion, resignation to the will of God the Father, etc., help us to realize that as humans we share a dignity that warrants appropriate speech. If, as we sing in the Divine Liturgy, our mouths are filled with the praise of God, there will be no room for the profane and obscene.